There's a sign over there. Wow. That's probably from the mid-20s. That's crazy. Yeah, white ceramic. <laughs> Tree grew into it. The sign is just right off of Highway 26. It's only half a mile up the trail here. But there's a mystery here for anyone to solve if they kind of investigate a little bit. What, what's with the line? What, what are they doing? What are they trying to tell us? It's quite a story. This is a story about Bob and his time machine and his quest to go back in time. Ready to go? Yeah. His traveling okay. partner is his daughter, Eva. Okay. Together, they've been exploring the Mount Hood National Forest in search of a path that will lead them back to the early days of outdoor recreation in the 1920s and 30s. This path they seek was once Oregon's greatest recreational trails, the Skyline. No one's heard of the Skyline Trail. There's this forgotten link that was so important 100 years ago. Nobody, nobody knows it's even there. The internationally famous Pacific Crest Trail, or PCT, is arguably Oregon's most well-known trail. Yet the Oregon Skyline Trail came first and literally blazed the way. The Skyline was Oregon's first long distance recreation trail. It ran along the spine of the Cascades, from Mount Hood in the north, all the way south to Crater Lake, and then into California. Today, few traces remain, and those can be hard to find. This is called the Dance of the Skyline Trail. Gah! I don't know if it's easier under or over. You're walking down the middle of this like barely visible trail. It's like you would never know that there's so much there and so much that you can discover and like you can decide to be like, no, actually, I'm going to find this again. Her time in the woods evolved from just camping and picking huckleberries to joining me on these adventures to find these old trails and to see where it used to be a ranger station. And R. E. Bartell, 1933. These guys were working hard out here. Hmm. I think part of being a parent is to sort of instill wonder into your kids. I mean, I'm my own dad, so to speak. I, have a lot, I, like, to, I like to instill my own wonder and look at a map and say, well, well let's go there. Well, look at this mountain. Well, maybe there is a meadow. Maybe there is an abandoned trail. Who knows what's there? Let's, let's research it. Let's, let's go find out. Where do we go? Which way? Where's the next place? That way? The word trailblazer is commonly used, especially in Oregon. Hmm. It's a general term for someone who leads the way. Yeah, there's a blaze there. But it has a very literal meaning. Notching a cut into a tree trunk with an ax to create a permanent scar on the bark called a blaze. Yeah. Well, there's one. You can still see kind of the ax mark in there from 100 years ago. Boop, boop, boop. So what's interesting about the Skyline Trail is they have these three dots. And they're on both sides of the tree. And, they, and they're so plentiful. The, the guy just took a little hatchet and, and carved it up, carved the bark away. So even though the trail is completely abandoned, it hasn't been used in 50 years or more, it's still blazed. You can still follow it. If you don't mind climbing over a few logs, it'll take you where you got to go. There's a blaze. Bob's fascination with the skyline is not just the lost trail but the abandoned places that it once connected. And some of those places can still be explored. This is Clackamas Lake, and it's been a very important place for a very long time. The Skyline Trail went right through the middle of it. If you would arrive here in 1925 or so, it would have been a bustling, lively place. The forest guards running back and forth, and cross-cut saws on people's shoulders, and pack horse strings. And it's a little different today. It's quiet. It's a little forgotten about corner of our national forest. Oh, it's very dark in there. There's a mirror or something in there, that's about it. 
here it still feels alive. You still have the, the experience of being in the 1930s and the 20s. It, it's, it's really frozen in time. My whole life I've been like, oh, I'm going camping this weekend, you know. And my friends, have, you know, they're like, oh, that's nice, me too. I'm like, no, no, no. You're not, you're not going camping the way I am. We're like, these are two separate experiences right here. You know, it's like, this is how most people do it. This is how my, my dad and I do it, you know. You gonna do your tent now? Probably. Following the Skyline Trail came the Skyline Road, which allowed the very first automobiles into the National Forest. A new form of outdoor recreation was created, car camping. Bob's version of car camping is, well, Part of the time travel journey. Yeah, my dad definitely has a more specific way he likes to exist in the woods and the way he likes to go about camping, you know. I was 16 when I got my first lantern. It's been with me for a long time, so it's kind of sentimental. Well, this one's called a super baby. He lights his lanterns at the end of the night, you know. <laughs> and I don't know, I think it's definitely like a more classic experience that a lot of people have. I think part of me has a high, hard time with the modern world. Just kind of want things to be a little more manageable. This is just oil and a flame glass. They're, okay, I understand that. Setting up camp, you know, my dad's spending like half an hour lighting all his crazy lanterns. It's like, okay, now we are like surrounded by lanterns. In the 20s, there was just the Skyline Road. <sighs> right. Let's see if anybody's home. <laughs> This would have been totally different though, with, with the, the rangers in here, they would have had it all set up and a place to keep their boots and a little desk to do paperwork. And it would have been a tidy little place. For many years, there's a lot of neglect. And that's the frustrating thing about all these wonderful places. Yeah, it's seen better days. Talk about time travel, you wanna do it, you just sit right here. Can you imagine how many rangers have sat here? Yeah. This cabin you see was a historic guard station. It was built in 1910, right after the Forest Service was established. And there were many such guard stations, just like this one, scattered all across the Mount Hood Forest. And this one is unique because there's only one of two remaining in the Mount Hood Forest. The rest of them have either burned or been torn down. It's definitely interesting how he sees the world and sees the wilderness as well, you know. I think that he himself 
wishes he was a ranger in the 20s, you know? I think that's part of the reason why he loves it so much. Uh, there's, there's just a part of my being that feels like I stepped out of the 1920s, that, that I can't let go of that. It, it's a long, rattly drive to get here even now. Imagine being on the back of a horse or walking here in that time. It would have been a few days to get out here. You can still feel like you're a long way from anything. I think part of that is, is the appeal that it is close to town, but it still, it still feels wild for now. There's still that, that sense of, of wildness, quiet. Bob finds a section of the former trail clear cut by heavy equipment. The modern world has torn a hole in the fabric of his time travel. Well, the last time I was here, this was essentially wilderness. The road was barely a road. They brought us into the present day, and that kind of sucks when you're out trying to find something that'll link you to all these different times and experiences that are sort of timeless in themselves. I remember romanticizing the past. <laughs> the trail that first introduced Oregon to long distance recreational hiking became sections of the PCT. And the dirt road that first let automobiles into the forest is paved over in spots by modern roads. The in-between places have been left to grow back and fade into memory. Bob and Eva have reached Olali Lake just north of Mount Jefferson, one of the original camping destinations on the skyline. Soon, they'll have to turn around, head back to the city where jobs and school await. This will be the last camping trip of the summer, and perhaps one of the last in their search for the skyline. Just spending time in the woods with my dad is always something that I'm gonna look back on and be like, oh. <laughs> That's so sweet, you know, like, oh, mm, so father, cool. daughter, like, look at, look at that, Eva, look, look at those memories, you know. Their search for the skyline started when Eva was in middle school. She's now starting her last year of high school. It's not going to be as easy to go to the woods for weeks on end with my dad in the, when I'm in college, you know. She's going to go to college and she's going to have her own life, and sure, we'll camp and we'll hike and things, but... It, our roles will change, and yeah, yeah, I'm going to miss her a lot. I mean, in the most literal sense, you know, Skyline is, it's a thing that's made to connect. It's not just something that's been abandoned, it's something that's like, takes you where you need to go. and still can even after years of being like discarded it's like you can always choose to come back to something even if it's labeled as like lost you can always choose to find things again and i think that's a beautiful thing